Um, customer satisfaction and uh, customer service. And, and how is it these days that small and medium-sized enterprise businesses can, um, can service their customers? So I like to start foundationally. There's, there's a lot of maybe, I don't want to say superficial, but a lot of more high-level issues, more specific details surrounding uh, customer satisfaction. But let's start at the basics. How do we grow a business? First, we have to find customer. I mean, we have to have a product or service. So let's say, for the sake of argument, that's the ante to play the game. You've got um, a good product or service, right? You make the best eclairs in Calgary, and your bakery is uh, well known for its great cupcakes. Whatever it is, you have to have a good product or service to even be in business. But now that you have that, how do we grow? Well, we need to somehow get customers. Right, and so we can get into in another discussion about marketing and how do we get customers. But we form, um, or we rather uh, segment customers into two things. The first thing you need to do is conquest customers. You have to acquire new customers. I call that conquest of customers. And once you have a customer, everybody knows it's easier to retain a customer than it is to conquest a new customer. Maybe uh, easier is a bad uh, choice of words. It is far cheaper. The amount of um, effort and time and uh, money necessary for marketing to attract new customers far exceeds. And I don't know what the recent uh, stats are on that. At one time, it was about 600% more expensive. And it probably is depending on the industry. Um, but it's far more expensive and time and labor intensive to uh, resource intensive to conquest new customers than it is to retain customers. So if you acknowledge that, we say, okay, if I'm new in business, I need to go out and find customers. I gotta do that. Everybody understands that. Once you have those customers, you need to find out about those customers as much as possible, and you need to look after them and you need to retain them in hopes of two things. Okay, so we've got conquest and retention, customer retention, we're gonna retain customers. Now we're over here at retention. There's two things we're going to focus on with retention. One is we're hoping to get repeat business, of course, from them, right? That's why you want to retain a customer in hopes that he reorders from you. He comes back to your bakery several times, maybe every Friday on his way home from he stops at that bakery and gets those favorite cupcakes. Um, but also referral. That's the second part of customer retention that's so uh, crucial. Think about it, if you lose a customer, you're not getting referrals from that customer. I think that's a general rule. There may be a reason, maybe a person who moved out of your market and through social media, they, they might promote a, a business. Oh, I used to love those cupcakes in Calgary, they were so great, and, and he still may refer to you. But generally speaking, if you lost the customer because he didn't see the value in continuing to give you repeat business, it's also not going to give you referral business. So retaining customers, twofold for the purposes of retention and referral is critical. And so how do we do that? That's the next question that business owners have to ask. And, and very often, depending on the size of the business, I mean, there are some clients that we have that may have as few as five employees. And that may mean that the owner is the manager. He is also the person on the front desk. Uh, he is the smiling face you see. He may be the person answering the phone. Th those are uh, complicated um, that's a complicated situation to be in. That's one of the most difficult things of being a small business owner is when you're a jack of all trades. You have to do everything. You're the accountant. You're the guy in charge of marketing. You're the person in charge of human resources. And you just go wherever, like a pinball. You're bouncing all over the business wherever you're needed. And then we talk about customer satisfaction. Well, uh, the term fires, you're putting out fires or uh, used to call it heat when, when the customer was upset, but I guess maybe the customer gets heated and that's where the expression probably came from. But that, that needs to become number one priority. So you, you end up having to drop everything you, you're doing, which may involve innovation, it may involve conquesting new customers, marketing, refining, uh, streamlining your process, increasing your value proposition, your unique selling proposition. Those are the things that business owners care most about and need to be working on and yet, customer satisfaction, we're saying it's paramount. Without customer satisfaction, you're dead in the water. Your, your business will wither. And so naturally, customer, or rather, 
business owners and managers will drop everything else to pay attention where there's a customer concern, or at least they should. And then that begs the question, is this the best use of my time? Should I maybe look at putting, uh, employing resources, whether those again are um, applications and tools or live people to um, handle my customer satisfaction? And again, as we get into some of the details of customer satisfaction, it's far better to make things good to begin with. Like, let's say, I'm using the, the example of the bakery with the cupcakes, okay? So let's say out of every thousand cupcakes you sell, one of them is inferior quality or whatever. You might be able to accept those standards. But if, if 500 out of, a, or one out of every two cupcakes you sold had a problem and the customer was dissatisfied, the icing was scraping off on the, on the to-go box you gave them or something, and you had to keep dealing with that. You could have the most customer-friendly um, attitude, the most pleasant demeanor, and the best response as possible, but it's still reactive and it's not the best way to approach customer service. So what I like to do, I always, again, you know, I seem to be a very binary person, um, or duplicitous, no, not duplicitous. So there's, there's two things that I would tell people to go um, to look at when it comes to um, a situation that arises, a, an opportunity for improvement, a problem, especially a customer service problem. The first one is how do we deal with this situation right now? How do we make it right for the customer? You have to do that. That's urgent and it's important. You have to drop what you're doing and make it right for that customer. And then the second one is, how did that end up happening? You need to evaluate, how did we end up in that situation? Why was the icing scraped off? Do we need to resource our boxes? Why, why was that a cupcake tasting too salty? Have we got um, you know, some contamination in our recipe somewhere? You have to stop what you're doing to make sure that that problem doesn't recur. And by doing that, you can really save the waste of resources that might be necessary. Like, for example, you gave the guy, not only did you not charge him for the cupcake with the scraped icing, but you gave him another free cupcake or, you know, a coupon for 50% off his next order or something. There's a cost involved to customer satisfaction when it's reactive. There's, of course, a cost involved to being proactive for customer satisfaction, but again, it's far less resource intensive. So always look at both. How do I make this situation right right now? And how do I make sure it doesn't recur and become an ongoing problem for my customers? Now, with respect to fielding customer complaints, concerns, feedback, again, you can be reactive or proactive. I really recommend that you figure out a mechanism by which you can solicit customer feedback ask your customers, make it very easy, very easy. Customers are not going to jump through groups and answer 15 minute surveys and everything for the benefit of your business. The only reason that anyone's gonna take 15 minutes to give you constructive feedback is if they're upset about something already. That's a bad situation. But what we wanna do is react, or sorry, proactively in advance, create a very simplistic mechanism for customer feedback. And you may need to incent customers to do that. You might want to have a prize that, uh, you know, a giveaway for every uh, review that you get or something like that. But I'm talking about maybe again, a binary, I'm happy, I'm unhappy. You know, uh, they hit a button in your store or they get an email that after, they're, after they've taken delivery of their order, they get an email, I'm happy or five star. There's any number of ways to do it, but we want to do that. We want to have, proactive. Again, if you're following the trend or the, the chain of thought here, or the, or the train of thought, is that um, you're always trying to get ahead of it. You want to make things good for your customer before finding out uh, there's a problem, but you also want to know how to continually improve. What your goal is, is that when a customer gives you feedback from which you can improve your business, the feedback isn't actually a complaint. It's like, I actually quite liked it. it. It met or exceeded my expectations, yet I still have a suggestion for you. If that's the type of customer service program 
you've enacted with your company, you're, you're ahead of the competition. You're way ahead of the competition. And I don't expect that's going to be the case for many people listening, but um, that's the goal at least, okay? So figure out how to do that. And if you don't know how to do that, if that just sounds like, well, Michael, that sounds really all well and good. That's nice for you to say, but I don't know how I'm gonna do that. Well, <laughs> we can help you. We can help you do that. If you don't know how to put that in place, we've got tools to do that. And um, that way you can do what you do best. As a manager, as a business owner, you can get back to innovating and making sure that your production your product and your service is as valuable as possible and we can have some more automated um, things put in place to give to, to solicit customer feedback and to give you reports that's where you need to be you need to be analyzing the um, reports of customer sa satisfaction and spotting trends and um, reaching out to people who are, are concerned um, and so if we talk about, if we go even higher level, it's like, okay, well, do I use, again, AI? Do I use some kind of application? Do I use real live people? Again, that's very business dependent, industry dependent, uh, size and, and resource dependent. I hate to, it sounds like a cop out for me to say, well, that depends, but it really does. So that's why with our clients, we, we talk to them about, you know, what might be the best way to start based on experience that we see for a business their size and in their industry. And you always put yourself in the shoes of the customer. You ask yourself, if you were a consumer partaking in that product or service, what would you want? What would make things easy for you to give feedback and so on? And um, so, you know, a lot of uh, customer service mechanisms would be um, you know, first of all, there's got to be a feedback channel. So can customers phone me? Can they get a hold of me? So I just want to talk about the opposite, where things are bad. If you purchase something, maybe online or even in a brick and mortar store, and you can't get a hold of anybody who cares when you've got a problem, that's the opposite, right? That's the opposite of good customer service. That's what I'm saying we want to avoid. So what do we have to do? We've got to make it easy for the customer to get a hold of someone who cares. Those are the operative words, someone who cares. Because don't take for granted that your frontline personnel, your receptionist, the person who works uh, at, the, at the cash register, that they care like you do. They don't. And if you've got really good people, you know, we can help you with our HR department, get better and better people. That's a different topic. But if you've got really good people, they should care and, and you should align your their objectives with your own and somehow measure their performance according to customer satisfaction. But don't take for granted. Don't just assume that your frontline personnel who handle the incoming uh, queries and uh, maybe even complaints care the way you do. So again, you have to be testing that stuff. You have to look at it. You have to measure. You have to what, what I call mystery shop. You need to you need to file a complaint and see how long it takes for someone to reply to the complaint. Um, so all those kind of things. Like we could go, actually on this topic alone, I could give you advice for more than an hour. And so um, maybe I'll get off of, uh, of that because it's so business dependent on whether you should uh, employ uh, two or three or a team of people or outsource uh, customer satisfaction. But there are very, very sophisticated and inexpensive mechanisms to monitor customer satisfaction and give feedback to the owners. Um, but the key is that you are measuring that stuff over time and you are implementing innovation based on the feedback you get. If you're not getting any feedback, again, stop the presses. Go back and figure out how can I get uh, more feedback. We've all heard it said that the customer is always right. Well, I'm here to tell you that you already know, the customer is often wrong. The customer may have the details wrong. They may have the facts incorrect about what happened or whatever. The expression is meant to indicate you need to accept that arguing with a customer over the details 
is completely futile. So that's what we mean when we say the customer is always right. And I kind of object to that expression, but instead, I like to say, would you rather be right or would you rather be successful? Okay, so when it comes to customer satisfaction, always ask yourself the question. Let's say for the sake of argument, let's use our cupcake bakery example, that the guy comes back and he says, there is a hair in my cupcake. And you have every reason to believe that this person is, well, you have some reason to believe that the customer's not being forthright with you, but the truth. Maybe he, he, he's known in the area of somebody who scams the system or runs these little things. Who knows what it is? This could be a bad example. Would you spend any time arguing with him over it or would you just make it right? If you have found yourself in the past debating customers about the legit legitimacy of their complaint or whose fault it was, like if you were passing it, well, that was the shipping company's fault. That was, um, who knows? You know, that, that wasn't us. When it left our possession, it was in perfect shape. You're going to have to take it up. Don't do that. Would you rather be right? Would you rather be successful? We talked about how difficult it is to conquest the customer in the first place. Retain them. For goodness sake, retain them. And there will be times that you need to quote unquote fire a customer. There will be customers that you determined with good reason that maybe they were demeaning or abusive to your staff. Maybe there's a, a chronic problem where they're just never satisfied with your product or service. And um, those are the exceptions. You don't manage by the exception, you manage by the rule. So don't worry about being right. You know, they talk about uh, in marriage, they say happy wife, happy life. They're alluding to, again, do you wanna be right or do you wanna be married? Do you wanna be right or do you wanna be happy? And in business, I would say, do you wanna be right or do you wanna be successful? So spend some time figuring out some word tracks for customers. Oh, I'm very sorry that that happened. I will take the time to investigate to make sure that doesn't happen again. In the meantime, here's your refund. And could I offer you a promotional, this, that, or the other item as compensation for the frustration, for the stress, for the hassle, whatever it may be. It's, all, it's dependent on every business. You've got to do that. If you don't do that, that's what customers are now. You know, we talked about earlier about big companies um, framing the expectations of customers and if somebody can at the drop of a dime return something to Costco I mean Costco is just wonderful with returns right I've got a great story I won't go into right now but everybody can think of a story where Costco did not need there, there was it was sort of unreasonable expectations on behalf of the customer and yet Costco no questions asked gave the money back and I think small business owners, because we're um, expense conscious, we're so worried about expenses get out of control, we're worried that, that somebody could abuse the system. If our system of making it right for you, of making you happy, if our customer service system is so customer friendly that it can be abused, again, that's the exception. Don't manage by the exception. Instead, take a look at that. Monitor, you have to record. How often am I providing a refund? That way you can look back to why. Is there something in your production that needs changed? Is it the same person again and again who I'm giving a refund to? These types of things. The, the underlying principle that I'm talking about here is do you want to be right, do you want to be successful. Choose success instead of being right. Don't argue with customers, make it right for them. Make sure they're happy. And by the way, I would, I would say in a lot of cases, it, it depends again, you know, if you're, if you're a new home construction manufacturer, you know, a new home builder, or if you're selling cars, you can't replace the whole product, of course. There, there are various things that it's not reasonable that we have warranties and everything, we've got to make it right another way. Um, and then in small, in the example that I use for cupcakes or whatever, maybe it's just at a drop of a hat, we, we replace the whole thing, refund the money, whatever. But what we need to consider is just replacing, putting the customer square where he was when he walked into your establishment or, establishment or when he decided to deal with you, that's not really making it right. You need to further compensate him 
for the hassle, for his time. In the, in, in the example of um, uh, the hair and the cupcake, it's like, this guy's probably not coming back again. Certainly just refunding his money's not enough. I need to entice him to come back. Very sorry, here's your money back, here's a fresh cupcake, and here's a coupon for another free one the next time you come back. That's the way to return a customer. And I would encourage all of you listening who run a small, medium-sized business, bear in mind the frustration and hassle that you endure when something, a business that you engage doesn't come through. It's like, just because they refund your money, that's not, it's like, well, I wanted to give you my money in the first place because I want the product or service. So now I'm just back to the beginning. Now I'm frustrated and I complain to my friends about you. What we want to do as the book, I think the book's called Raving Fans, we want to create, Raving Fans, we want to create an army of people out there promoting our business, not an army of people that have justification for criticizing our business. 